I woke up two hours later. I had a full fucking panic attack, full panic attack, sweating. I had to stand up, walked around, cried a little bit, got into an argument with the dog about politics. I think I lost that argument. Um, I questioned every single every single decision I'd ever made, thought it was they were all terrible decisions. And then I, a literal fear of mine. And this is a fucking this is the God's honest truth. A literal fear of mine was that I was going to slip into a different reality and cease to be in this one. And it was terrifying. Bros and hoes, you're listening to your favorite thing podcast with Wells and Brandy. Uh, what's up? Hi. You're just not in a good mood today, are you? I was until the fucking camera would stop working. So, <laughs> should we do the show or do we you have just, to? Do you want to go and do you just want me to do this one solo? No, I got you some sure? things to say. Oh, you got some things? <laughs> yeah. Why are you bundled up like an Eskimo? Sorry, did I Inuit. tell you? Did I tell you? Oh yeah, that's right. Your um, your heater doesn't work. Your, there's no propane in your house. No heat. No hot water. Okay, so just so the wife tears know, real quick, <laughs> um, I went over to Brandy's mom's house the other day, which is in. It's a beautiful, one of the most beautiful houses I think I've been to in really? Los Angeles. Wow. It's so nice She'd over love there. Love to hear that. And it's in a really nice part of the uh, part of town that I uh, enjoy a lot. Also, by the way, the house that she bought next door. Yeah. Do, does she want to sell it to Sarah and I? No. Because Sarah and I would love to live in, in Toluca Lake. I think the house would be too small for you guys. It's pretty small. But she could sell it to us. Nah. And then, and then we could just walk to the country club. We're going to have a studio instead. No, you're not. Yeah. No, you're not. Yeah. Um, anyways, so everyone, we, I was just over at Tisha's house doing Sorry We're Stoned. Mm -hmm. um, and... Brandy's like, I'm going home tomorrow. And I was like, well, are you not supposed to be going home tomorrow? And she goes, no. And but Tish is going to be very upset. But I got to get, get out of here. And gotta also, go. as, uh, as, as girl is on a hunger strike. And she I got to get out of here. Yep. And by the way, it's like 75 degrees, blue skies, beautiful in Los Angeles. Yeah, like, the, the my final hour in Los Angeles, it was beautiful. Up until then, it was... So, it, my mom's basement was flooded. Found that out the day I left. I got home and I texted her and I was like, hey, mom, made it home. She was like, oh, how nice for you. I've been dealing with a flooded basement all day. Mm. Well, anyways, you were like, I got to get home. I was like, what do you got to get home to? And you told me that Nothing. you had a propane leak. So I'm thinking, <laughs> okay, yeah, you have to go home to stop a propane leak so there's not an explosion. But nay. Somebody already did that. Yeah. So And so I was like, oh, so well, it's fixed now, is it? No. because Apparently then, you know, not. A special part. Yeah. So you effectively left beautiful, sunny Los Angeles to go home early to cold as balls Nashville. I did. To go to a house that has no heat in it. No heat. Can you hear my little space heater, by the way? No. Okay, because it has to stay on. <laughs> well, so I guess my question is why? Okay, let me tell you what what had happened. Okay, tell me what what had happened. So I originally was like going to stay in LA through the 14th just in case I got to go to the Super Bowl. So then when my Super Bowl dreams got crushed, I was like, fuck it, I'm ready to go home because now that we're done with Star Wars Stone, like there's just nothing like sleeping in your own bed. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? And Fair. 10 days is a long time for me to be gone. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I'm like really good with short trips, you know, like mm -hmm. two nights is my favorite type of trip. I can do a four or five nighter, but once we get past that, I just want to go home. Okay, fair enough. So that was it. So, okay, but here's what had happened. So when did you come over? Friday? Thursday? Friday. Friday. Okay, so that night we went to dinner at this really cool restaurant, by the way, which you and Sarah should go to. Um, I already forgot the name of it. It was called Ilya. Ilya? Ilya? Okay. I'll look it up. Um it's it's attached to a weed store. Oh yeah, you tell me about this. Slash sex store okay. called Pleasure Chest and Pleasure Med. And then there's a oh, restaurant God. attached. And at first I thought they were gonna put weed in the food. So I was yeah. like not pumped because I was like, I'm starving and I can't eat because I'm not gonna eat weed. Yeah. That's not it at all. They don't put any weed in the food. They serve you phenomenal food, but then they also have a menu for weed where you can like order specific flavors and like s types of weed like pre-rolls and all the things mm. um and they serve drinks but non-alcoholic they can put cbd and thc in the drinks but you can also do mocktails 
Okay. So we go to this dinner. Can, can you have normal drinks? You can't. I think you. I think there's place. like a bar, maybe downstairs where you can go down and get one. But like the whole the whole shtick here is like no alcohol. I think it's like a weed thing. Okay. So, lo and behold, the food is fucking amazing, and there's no. Is weed it, in it or is everyone just so baked okay. that they think so, it's good? No, the food is good. But here's what was cool about the weed. I only smoked a little bit, like probably I didn't even feel high. So I don't even really know if it affected me, but everybody else was like, this is so great. We like had some appetizers and then you're kind of like, oh, I'm kind of full. And then you smoke a little weed and you're like, oh, no, I'm still hungry. And then mm. you order the main meal and then you're like, oh, so full. Could not have any more. Smoke a little weed. Have a little fun. Oh, hungry again and get some wow. dessert. It's actually kind of genius. Um, so it's kind of like in it's kind of like in Hunger Games when people from from the capital uh, yeah. take a potion to throw up so they can continue eating yes exactly. meanwhile everyone else in the other districts are starving, starving to death. that's what you're doing sort of so yeah. we're out at this restaurant it's friday night or whatever and i wasn't drinking or anything but i was like i don't want to get up at five in the morning to go home i think i'll just stay you know uh -huh. what am i going home for you know i have to yeah. stay i'll go do yfc at wells is monday like yeah. fine and my mom goes hmm you can't. And I was like, why? And she was like, because I've already uh, invited someone else to come stay in the guest house. Oh. In like the three hours between me, like being uncertain about leaving and then being like, I'm going to go home. She literally promised it to somebody else. Who? This kid, Kai. It's like Dom's like his mentor. He's a little surfer kid. He's very cute. But like, Kai, like I, I should get presidents. You know, I'm a, I'm a, a blood relative here. Yeah. And also, no, Kai's coming to stay. If your name's Kai, do you have to be a surfer? Yeah. Like, or is there anything else you're allowed to do? No, that's it. He's actually so. very good. Oh, um, sure. His name's Kai. He's very cute. And she's like, well, you and Kai can just share the guest house. No, no. Hey, I, maybe, maybe. No, maybe don't. Little, wanna, ee, ooh, ee, that ee, sounds ee, like ee, something ee, I would get arrested for. So, nope. Don't need any of that. How old is Kai? How old he, is Kai? He's like 16. Okay, maybe then no. He's a little young. Maybe and he's 18, And God bless though. him. He's so precious. But, like, I was looking for a relaxing you know, binge some TV kind of weekend, not like Got it. Yeah. 16 year old energy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It says a lady that went to a sex shop slash weed shop. It wasn't my idea. Weed restaurant. The restaurant did a bunch was of drugs. Honestly, it was some of the best food. We were all saying this. Some of the best food I've ever had. Like mm, phenomenal. Guys were baked. Nope. Very good. Um, so I tried to say okay. my mother gave my house away. Yeah. Well, her and house. here I am in the tundra. Just cold. Yeah, and that's why you're wearing a giant yeah. um, fleece. sweater. Yeah. It's fleece. Kind of look like um like a Pop Tart. <laughs> <laughs> I like Pop Tarts. <laughs> they're delicious. They are. But let's be honest, they are raviolis. Yeah. Yeah. They're dessert sort raviolis. Of. I mean they are. I think they're more of a pastry. And if you want to get really like specific, strudel. remember going back to my old theory that everything is either soup, salad, or sandwich? Yeah, I don't like this theory. Te technically, a Pop-Tart is a sandwich. Mm -mm. Yeah, it is. No, sandwiches have like openings between two pieces. Okay, what would you call a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? It has an open. The bread is two pieces. No, no. Can you have an open face sandwich? Then it's not a sandwich. But it's but the name is open face sandwich. But that's different than a sandwich. It's a, still a sandwich. No, it's, it's just different. One no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Well, anyway, so all the wife tears out there. This was hundreds of episodes ago. I feel like, but I <laughs> had this whole theory that everything that. is either soup, salad, or sandwich, and I firmly, firmly believe. No, it is a pizza sandwich. Absolutely not. Cereal, soup. That's fair, but no on the pizza. <laughs> no on the pizza. Vegetable medley, salad. No. Um. So by the way, so to the wives' ears, I went over and did. Sorry, you're stone. Sorry, we're stone. Whatever. And um, and I didn't want to smoke weed. By the way, did I tell the story of me smoking or of eating the gummy on this podcast or just your mom's pot? You and your mom's podcast. No, I think you told it on this one because I Where weren't I you in uh, Disneyland World. No, 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 no. When no. you told it, it. when you told no, when you told it. No, it happened when I got back from Disney World. So I haven't told the story yet. So I'm going to tell I it on maybe this. Maybe you did. Because I had the... already heard it. The story when you told it on Cyrus. I think I just told you. 
I don't think I. Well, anyways, I'm going to tell. It doesn't really okay. fucking matter. I'm going to tell okay. the story anyways. Fine. But anyways, I went on Sorry We're Stoned, and uh, okay, so I'll just tell, tell the story really quickly. So when I got back from Disney World, I really wanted to sleep really, really well, and I have trouble sleeping. So I took a like a sleepy time weed gummy, and it was a ten milligram. Okay, mm-hmm. and I already know that like I don't, I think I'm allergic to weed or something. So I ate half of it, five milligrams, which I don't think is is all that much. I have no you, idea. Um, so I went to sleep. I woke up two hours later. I had a full fucking panic attack, full panic attack, sweating. I had to stand up, walked around, cried a little bit, got into an argument with the dog about politics. I think I lost that argument. Um, I questioned every single, every single decision I'd ever made, thought it was, they were all terrible decisions. And then a literal fear of mine. And this is a fucking, this is the God's honest truth. A literal fear of mine was that I was going to slip into a different reality and cease to be in this one. And it was terrifying. So what was uh, what was Boo's political stance? You don't want to know. I do. Just libertarian. Hmm. (laughs) Isolationalist. I see. (sighs) You fucking. Yeah. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) Nihilist. Hmm. You know, who believes in nothing, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. say what you want about the tenets of natural socialism. At least it's an ethos. Um, so I go over to Tish's house to do your guys' podcast, Starry We're Stoned. And Starry We're Stoned. Starry We're Stoned, still stoned from it. So I, and you plot me next to the fucking female virgin version of Snoop Dogg. Yes. Okay. Which is your mother. Mm Mm-hmm. And we start this like it was like a two hour podcast. Your mom ripped like three joints and it was just all in my face. And halfway through it, I was like, I'm fucking baked as shit. I yeah. remember there's a part in the show where we're like taking calls or something. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I listened to none of it. I remember <laughs> I remember like being like. I started thinking about something else. Then I was like, oh, shit, I'm doing a podcast. I'm supposed to be like paying attention to some of the answering questions. And I was like, I haven't listened to anything these people have been saying because I am so contact high from freaking <laughs> Willie Nelson over here. How do you think I feel? I have to deal with this every time we record. Dude, it's insane. I literally I wake up with like my, my th- with a sore throat after I record a podcast. With totally. Me. Yeah. Oh, so then afterwards, I had to go to my golf club because I wanted to get a golf club changed out. Mm-hmm. And I walk up to the pro and I'm like, oh, and he's like, what's wrong with you, bro? And I was like, fucking contact time from Tish Cyrus. <laughs> I was like, I need a new club. He's like, what? Anyways. Um, that is insane. Well, I can't wait for your episode to come out. I thought it was really good. When does it come out? I have no idea. That's that's above my pay grade. <laughs> Yeah, by the way, their podcast is is way overproduced. So many cameras. Do you have a lot of like YouTube followers? Yeah, we sure fucking do. Really? More what's than wrong YFT. With, what's wrong with this podcast? <laughs> Our production budget is low. Well, maybe so. That's what's wrong with it. But there's no way it's better than this show. Oh. <laughs> Listen, I've been on your show. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's just a, a stoned woman meandering through life. <laughs> Listen, I don't know what to tell you. It's popping off. Yeah, I guess. Well, whatever it works, works, I it's guess. popping off. All right, should we start the show? Oh, yeah. 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 Go for it, Inuit. Bro. <laughs> Bros and O's. You're listening to your favorite thing podcast with Wells and the Very Cold Brandy. I actually feel pretty good. This little spa- space heaters are. They're legit. Yeah, I know, but they can fuck up your legs, I think. They'll like, give you like a rash or something. If I've you seen sit that. like right the fuck next to it. I don't know. I've just seen that. I've heard that. Yeah, no. I mean, they can catch on fire, so you should never leave them unattended. And you yeah, should yeah, never yeah. leave them like sitting on like anything flammable, like carpet or a blanket or anything like mm. that. That would be crazy. But I yeah. do not leave mine unattended. Got it, got it, got it. Also, never, mm. ever plug a space heater into an extension cord. Or a power oh, well, stuff. You're supposed to plug it directly into the wall. That's that's another that? reason they. I don't know. They just catch fire if you put a, an extension cord to it. It's like higher risk of that. Hey, scientists, let's get it together. I'm just saying. I'm what just trying to keep here? everybody safe here. Thank God. Yeah. Um, want to start the podcast off with um something that I hate. Oh. Real quick. The Chiefs winning. No, nah, I mean we can get into that. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second. I got some takes. 
Um, but you know on TikTok, when people use the sound, I think I like this little life. Hate it. Hate, I hate you so much for doing that. <laughs> hate because it. you know what? That's not your real life. All right? Well, you're showing there, like you on like a dock. And like, well, I think I like this. Shut up. Okay? <laughs> All right? Why don't you show the part where you're fucking doing paperwork mm. in your cubicle? True. And use that sound. <laughs> okay? Okay. I think I like, I think I want to shoot you in the face, lady. Um, I am a little annoyed about the Super Bowl, not because, mm. not because of like Taylor Swift of it all. And like, it's just so funny that people give a shit about that aspect of it. I don't really care about that. I think it's, I think it's quite nice, actually, the bunch of people who never watched football are now watching football. I think that's great for the game. Okay. Um, what I don't like about it is everyone thought that they were going to win and I don't want that to be the, I want everyone to be wrong. I wanted the, mm. I wanted the team that no one thought was going to win to win. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. I know. And here's my thing. Uh, this is going to, I don't think why I have tears give a shit about this, but in overtime, why wouldn't you get the ball second? Cause then you know what you need to go do. Mm. That was, and I know that like their deep, the Niners defense was gassed. And I think that was mm. the idea, but like, if you know you have to go score a touchdown because the other team scored a touchdown, then it makes it easier to call plays because you're like, well, I get, we're going to go for it on fourth down, you know? True. Um, what did you think about the Super Bowl? I didn't turn it on until the half. Um, okay. I guess like right before the half. When I, when I turned it on, the score was like 3-0. Yeah, and it was, I was, it like, was kind of boring in the beginning. Yeah, I was like, oh, I haven't missed anything. This is boring as fuck. Yeah. Um, and then right after I turned it on, somebody scored. I guess yeah. the Chiefs. Um, and so I was like, oh, I'll turn it on at the right time. But halftime show, I don't know if it's because I wasn't expecting a lot. And I don't mean that as a dig to anybody. I think, like, Rihanna was so overhyped. Yeah. And, and Rihanna was great. And I love Rihanna. But, mm. like, this one, I really just, like, didn't think about it a whole lot. It was my fucking favorite halftime show I've ever seen. Well, that's I a loved reaction. it. That's, that's a prisoner of a moment statement there i absolutely loved it i loved it too my favorite part roller skates i know i was like how are they moving like that and everyone's I'm like they're so on roller impressed. skates so impressed oh my goodness i mean usher so many hits i think like yeah, i course. i grew up with usher i mean so did you come on like yeah. every song has just like so many memories from my adolescence yeah um i loved it like because of that i thought he was amazing I mean, how Luda. old is he? And he's still fucking like dancing and got the moves and got the voice and he's ripped as fuck. Like I was just yeah. impressed. Um, all the guests were super fun. Um, I was obsessed with her. I thought she was iconic as all fuck. Like so fucking cool. Yeah. Um, Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. Ooh, she's still so hot. Rough first note coming out of the gate. But other than that, like slayed it um yeah, whatever loved loved it you know what I, this is what this is what i say when people do stuff like that is like at least you know they're singing you know what yeah, i mean very like, true. i love that um i loved the whole thing i thought it was amazing one of the best halftime shows i've ever seen if not my fave so far jermaine dupree's uh weird little schoolboy outfit i don't know about that <laughs> i mean it got people talking about him i guess you know yeah but i respect he it was he doing like um, what was it? Berries and cream, berries and cream, <laughs> berries and. Was he doing that or was he doing the guitar player from ACDC? You know, I don't know. Like I, I didn't know what he was doing. I don't know. Um, I loved Luda. You know, love Luda. Went, I went to school in Mississippi. You know, you gotta love some Luda. Love. And uh, I mean, Little John, I, come on. I made a commercial with Little John. Love him. Love him. I know. I loved so, all of it, truly. Um, yeah. So that was cool. And then the rest of the game, I like kind of watched on and off. Um, I mean, I was just crushed. Like once the Niners had to kick the field goal, I just knew it I was know. over. I knew I it. Know. Bummer. Uh, it is what it is. I, I would say this though. Like, uh, I, I don't know if you've seen this, but a lot of people are like saying that Taylor got the ick 
uh, I saw that. F- from from Travis for a couple of things. One, he tried to do like Elvis, you know, uh, yeah, he always, Viva La. Well, he always does something crazy on yeah, in their wedding whatever. speeches or whatever. Yeah, and who gives a shit? But the other one that I saw was that because Travis Kelsey yelled at the coach. Oh, and yeah. And it's like, Taylor, you need to watch out. And to that, I say, shut yeah, I don't the fuck up. Because here's the thing. That's, the, you know what that is? That's someone who's never played on a sporting team, like a, on, on a team before. That's true. You, you have, that's what happens. You are very, very emotional. You are, he was very, very, Andy Reid said what he was yelling at him about was, I want to go in the game so I can score and win mm-hmm. the game. Like, that's a, that's what a fucking athlete does. Like, that's, yeah. I don't think that that's cringy. I honestly, I saw like some doctor on TikTok was like, Taylor, you need to be worried about this because this has got like... Your TikTok algorithm is I know. nuts. And I'm like, what kind of doctor are you? Like, what are you talking... He's a tight end <laughs> playing the Super Bowl. Of course he's yelling at the coach because he wants to... Like, what are we talking about here? Well, forget Travis Kelsey. You know who the like, who won the fucking Super Bowl on TikTok is Nick Bosa. Well, yeah. Well, he's got some thick thighs. Yes, he does. Him, but I love him and that. Like, keys are thick. In everybody the thighs. has discovered Nick Bosa because they tuned in to watch Taylor Swift, and now all the girlies know about Nick Bosa. He is smoking hot. I gotta say. Yeah, he's a big boy. He's also a child. He's like twenty six or something crazy. Yeah. Well. Hot though. Maybe your mom can let him come stay in the guest house. <laughs> <laughs> and come sneak in. Oh God. Uh yeah. Anyway, Super Bowl, Super Bowl, whatever. It's over. No, no. It's over. Yeah, and I don't know if you if you caught any of the waste management golf tournament. Um, it looked like a complete shit show, which I com- think it always is, though. It's always kind of a shit show, but like it went full Woodstock, like completely <laughs> off the rails on Saturday. They stopped tech checking tickets. Yeah. They were just letting people in, so they had to cut everyone off of booze, and people were fucking angry. Do you see that? Why does it say thumbs up on my Why? picture right there? I don't know. Why did it do that? I've seen that before. You have? Yay! I, I like... <laughs> I don't think. Something... What the fuck I just happened I did see it. There? I did see it. Uh, anyways. What the fuck is happening? Oh, yeah. Missed opportunity. Well, well... What the fuck is happening here? For those of you that don't know what happened because you're listening on the podcast, I'll probably cut it out anyways. But like, for some reason, (laughs) my video just did a a big thumbs up. Yeah. Like, like an animation of it. Mm -hmm. Yay. Um, Maybe like what you said. I don't know. Yeah, maybe so. Uh, Speaking of, I have a new soundboard. Oh, boy. You ready for it? Yeah. I showed the Y of Tears before I called you, but Mm. I... um, I feel like you need to see it. Okay. Everything I touch starts to shake. Everything I touch starts to shake. Oh, yeah. Everything I touch starts to shake. And you don't care. How do you feel about that? I like it. Rings true. Yeah. Rings true to me. That's from the Dream Eaters on TikTok. And okay. I love it because everything I touch also turns to shit. Yeah, what what's that about? I think that's just life, you know? Yeah. I'm not sure. Before we get into some fave things, I've got some things that I think we need to talk about. Okay. Um, I don't even know if this is true, but um gosh dang it, do I hope it is. Are are you friends with Shailene Woodley? No, but I did know her back in the Disney days. Right? Okay. Mm-hmm. And then wh- didn't Liam do a movie with Shailene or no? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Anyways, I could be wrong, but I don't think so. My, um, my roommate was on, um, the American teenager show. Oh, okay. Uh, so, whatever. Secret life, the American teenager. Yeah. That was yeah. Shailene's first like big thing. Uh, and uh, my roommate in LA was on that show. So okay. that's my Shay connection. So anyways, I saw this on, uh, on Instagram. I don't know if it's true. But gosh dang it, do I wish it, but do I hope it is. Okay. Shailene Woodley is known for living authentically, Mm -hmm. despite being paid less than her co-stars in Big Little Lies. Mm -hmm. Her successful acting career has provided financial stability, granting her the freedom to make her own choices. Mm -hmm. 
Woodley occasionally shares unconventional details about her diet, including her preference for eating insects like ants and June bugs, believing in the future of insect-based food. Uh, she consumes clay and bone broth, Choices that may surprise some, but reflect her unique lifestyle. Woodley's openness about her dietary habits showcases her genuine and unapologetic approach to life. Mm. She's eating clay? Like mud? I don't know, but she's always been kind of a hippie. No shit. I mean, so it wouldn't shock me. You know what I'm saying? I can get. I can, I'm good with the bugs and the June bugs and the ants. That's fine. Okay. But mud? I don't know, Shay Shay. Seems a little fucked up. <laughs> you know? I mean, seems like she's doing great. So I say whatever works for you, you know? What do you think those poops look like? Because poop already kind of looks like mud. So if you're already eating something that looks like mud, what happens to the, your mud pie when you eat mud pie? Probably not a whole lot. Yeah. I don't know. I say go. I say go, Shailene. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder every every time that she um gets mud and she's she's about to eat it, she thinks this. Everything I touch turns to shit. Because Fair. the mud does turn to shit. Mm. You know. Anyways, I love how kooky she is. I do too. Like, I will. I want to go to dinner with her. <laughs> And I want to be like, but I don't want to eat what she's eating. But I want to be right. like, tell me everything. You mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. How do we get here, sister? And I love that you're a kooky, crazy lady. I imagine she is, you know, like a, like, definitely not using razor blades in. Oh, definitely not. In the pits, you know? I think, she, yeah, I don't think so. Totally fine with that. No judgment here. Mm -hmm. uh, but like. I, I mean, are, do you think her, her friends are like, that's Shailene. Well, she's eating yeah. some clay again. Yeah, I do. Yeah. I kind of love her. I've always really liked her. And no I, judgment, but she's eating clay. Guys. I think she's a very talented actress. Super talented. I love everything she's done. Totally. Except for the clay eating part. I'm down with it. June bugs? I do like crickets. She'll hey. probably outlive us all. Totally. But what kind of life is that? Out here eating clay and June bugs like a fucking. She seems to be doing great. Like know. a caveman. <laughs> she's she's on that fucking caveman diet. Mm. Anyways, um, and then the other thing that I saw that I thought was uh was kind of interesting is uh you know the song semi charm kind of life. By Third Eye Blind. semi charm yeah. Mm -hmm. semi charm kind of life. Mm -hmm. It's a very upbeat, happy song. Mm -hmm. You know? I saw this video, and a dad's like, to his kids, he's like, you gotta listen to this, it's a great song. Uh, but then he like kind of like starts to decode what the lyrics are, and it's pretty fucked up. So, um, well, let's just play it for everybody. The sky was gold, it was gold, I was taking steps up into my nose, and I wish I could get back there someplace back. Doing crystal meth will lift you up until you break? True. Did you know that was the lyric? I did not. Let's keep going. I won't stop. I won't come down. I'll keep stock with the TikTok rhythm for a bump for the drop. And then I bumped up. I took a hit that I was given. Then I bumped again. Then I bumped again. Is this song just about doing cocaine with Leo DiCaprio yes. at the Super Bowl? Yes. Okay, so I went and found the <laughs> lyrics, right? Uh -huh. Let's just go over them real quick. <laughs> and people gave Miley shit for the Molly in the bathroom line. Come on. Seriously. Uh, the sky was gold. It was rose. I was taking sips of it through my nose. <laughs> Creative. And I wish I could get back there, someplace back there, smiling at the pictures you would take 
doing crystal meth will lift you up until you break. It won't stop. I won't come down. I'll keep stock with a TikTok rhythm for a bump for the drop. And then I bumped up. I took a hit that I was given. Then I bumped again. And then I bumped again. I mean, it's a catchy song. It's like in cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's a lot of songs from the 90s that are like this, where it's like the lyrics come so fast, you don't even know what you're saying. Yeah, life comes at you fast, apparently. True. Crystal meth. Doing crystal meth will lift you up until you, until you break. Uh, Jesus, so third eye blind. Anyways. Um, That's hilarious. Yeah, no. You got some fave things, bro? Um. So. Okay. Now that I'm four episodes into Masters of the Air, mm -hmm. I'm obsessed with it. Oh, you like it, huh? So much so that I went back and watched the first two episodes yeah. because I feel like I was just like in and out okay. paying attention because it wasn't grasping me. Now that I'm grasped, you're grasped. I've started grasped. So I've started for episode one to rewatch the first two and now I'm hooked. Also, mm. I love Callum Turner so much. Did you know he's dating Dua Lipa? Yes, we found, we found that out <sighs> recently. I actually love them together. I mean, I don't know. As long as he's tall, because I know she's very tall. He is tall. Yeah. He's tall. He's hot. I'm here for it. I get it, girl. Is he more the heartthrob um, than um, Austin Butler? No. Austin Butler is definitely like the, like on paper, like, you know, heartthrob, good looking guy. Now that I've mentioned the, like him just look trying to want to be cool the entire time is, is a little annoying, right? I I You're like him it. in it. I like, it. I like, I like it. him in it too. But I've also heard a lot of people complain about him in this role, like saying it's like not the best. Yeah, it's like, okay, we can... um, I like it. I like him. I, it's doing it for me. But to me, Callum Turner's the star of the show. I'm obsessed with him. Okay. If it doesn't work out with Dua Lipa, call me. I don't know. Like, yeah. Big fan. Um, I finally finished uh, The Cure's Case of Natalia Grace and then Natalia Speaks. And I don't think I um, really, I didn't really get to put a... Are you sure? We and talked about it a lot. Oh, we did. Um, but <laughs> I didn't see the last episode okay. until after we recorded the last episode. So, you know, I'm watching the entire last episode. I'm like, okay, good. You know, this is great. Like, there's some closure. This is, some, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy. Whatever. The last, when I tell you the last 20 seconds will fucking shake you to the core, <laughs> will change everything that you believe will completely make you think that you are falling into a different reality a la when I took a weed gummy to sleep. I am, it's not hyperbole. It is real life, lady. What happens in the end is insane. And guess what? We're getting a season three. No. A season three. And I'm very excited about that. So what if you put, took a weed, like smoked weed or took a weed gummy and watched this show? Oh would that God. just be like, mm -mm. absolutely nuts? I, I don't know what would happen. I've never done DMT, but I assume that's what would happen. I would fall into like some sort of like elven world. Okay. I'm not ready for that. Okay. Interesting. Um, but in the same vein, uh, Sarah and I have gotten into like really bad documentaries. And have you heard of American Nightmare on Netflix? Yeah, because you told me about it. I'm sorry. We're sorry. I know, but let's pretend that you don't know this. Um, <laughs> and... No, never heard okay. of it. Do tell, Wells. I can't believe you didn't make it an actress. This is insane <sighs> to me. Shocking. After a harrowing home invasion, a kidnapping in 2015, a couple is accused of staging the ordeal when the woman reappears in this true crime docuseries, American Nightmare, on Netflix. Absolutely insane. So it starts with this guy calling 911. He's like, they're like, what? No, no, no. What's your What's your problem? And she, he's like, my girlfriend was kidnapped last night. And they're like, last night? Why didn't you call last night? And he was like, I was I was uh, bound by my wrists, and they gave me like Nyquil and a sedative, and I just woke up. And you're like, oh my god, this is crazy. And then like 48 hours later, the the bitch shows up. The cops think that he killed this poor lady. 
for sure. And he's like, I didn't kill her. I don't know what to tell you. The cops will not believe him. And then all of a sudden she shows up. The cops are like, this is gone girl. They're just gone girling us. What's going on? You find out that he was like talking to his ex. So you're like, well, maybe he did kill her. I'm not really sure. Anyways, it's absolutely insane. And the ending is not the way that you think it's going to end. But it's also like, ah, uh, once you find the ending, you're like, fuck. And then it also is a hero. Um, anyways, highly recommend American Nightmare. It's only like three episodes, too. It's kind of giving Staircase a little bit. I know she actually died, but like. Yeah, no, I need you to watch it. Okay, okay, okay. But I need you to watch The Curious Case. Of the, like, if, if, we're, if, we're, if we're saying which one's better, Curious Case and the Tiger is much better. Uh, really? But that's like two whole seasons. I just, just put it on tonight. And but tonight's The Bachelor. I know. And they've already got a fucking, uh, like a two-on-one coming. Love that. I know. I think that the blonde girl is uh, wackadoo. Do we- I was gonna like I was gonna say should we talk about it for one second? We like, can, yeah. I listen. Here's here's the thing. Yeah. When two people on this show start having a tiff, yeah, to the point where there's gonna be a two-on-one, neither one of y'all be making it. Like neither one of y'all, even though one may be right and one might be wrong, if you are the kind of person that's going to get in one of these tiffs, you ain't making it till the I end. I know, but the I don't think the brunette's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I agree, but <sighs> how do I say this nicely? I think that she's just like loud and like a big personality and that's rubbing yeah. people the wrong way. But like, yeah, if that's what, if that's who you are. Why are you going to tie your kids to stripes? That type of personality doesn't typically make it to the end. Maybe, but I guess Caitlin Bristow kind of did. Yeah. Maybe she, but she wasn't really that way on Chris's season. She was so Caitlin was likable, even though she was loud and big. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't. I, I think my my personal take is that the blonde girl's in the wrong. I agree, but the brunette girl's not completely innocent either. I did like in the last. She th- was being a little shit that one night when that girl was like complaining, like complaining about her age or whatever okay even if you think it's crazy don't shit talk yeah don't shit just don't shit talk i'll I'll say this um people are throwing the bully word around way too much these days that's stupid i i agree that that's stupid oh over that anyways and i do like what the brunette i don't know anyone's name i do like how the brunette was like if you like her you're not into like my flavor i was like good for you sure you know yeah yeah I don't know. I don't think he's into either flavor, but I, I, the blonde girl, what's, what's frustrating is like the blonde girl. I really liked her until she took this too far. Like by all means, say your piece one time, say your piece one time to the girl and stand up for your friend and then just never bring it up again. Yeah. Just leave it alone. Just totally. My mom likes to say the more you stomp and shit, the more it stinks. Yeah. True. Yeah, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. There's a little, there's a little piece of, a little nugget of, uh, of Tish theology. If you yeah, will. you know, sometimes she really makes sense. Um, at least everything back in the documentary world, mm-hmm. we, we started watching Escaping Twin Flames. Don't, okay. don't bother. Trash. Don't okay. bother. Here's I wasn't the thing. going to, but thank you. Here's the thing. My thing, I, I hate the founders of this cult i watched the their videos and i'm like ugh, i would never join this cult you guys are so annoying and the guy especially i hate him you're not a good cult leader guy all right you need to be okay. magnanimous you need to be gregarious you need to be someone who i want to take the drink the kool-aid with and you just seem like an annoying little bitch so not not for me okay i watched okay. about a quarter of an episode and i w- went to sarah and i go wow, I, do I you see. hate this and she's like i hate mm. this and i said Cut it off like a phantom limb. No documentary that I watched. <laughs> this one I liked. Okay. You are what you eat. Have you heard, uh, have you heard about that? Yeah, I'm, I'm scared to watch that. Uh, I eat a lot of sugar. Yeah, okay. But so this one, it's called You Are What You Eat, um, a twin experiment. In a, scienti- in a scientific experiment. Identical twins adopt different diets and lifestyles for eight weeks to see how food impacts the body. Only eight weeks? Yeah, so they get like 
identical twins who obviously mm-hmm. have the exact same genes and they make one of them eat a, a healthy but carnivorous diet and then the okay. other one totally vegan diet or vegetarian. I think it's vegan. Um, and then so they take like all their like body metrics, body mass index, everything uh, before and then after. And you kind of see what what's better for you and what's not better for you. You know, like... If they're twins, this this is probably a stupid question. Uh-huh. If they're twins, do they like absolutely always have the same blood type? Yes, they have the same blood yeah. type for sure. They have okay, okay. genetically, they are the same. Okay. In terms of DNA, because it is, uh, got, got it. It's the same. I didn't know if blood. T- I guess blood. T- I don't. I, I'm stupid. I don't know. I was like, is blood type part of your DNA? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, genetically, they are the same person. Got it. There's no deviance in their genetics um okay. so anyway it's pretty interesting it's, it's on netflix by the way it's pretty interesting i would say this it doesn't i thought i knew how it was going to end like of course being vegan is being vegan is much healthier and no, it, i wouldn't think so Oh, really i would think the opposite yeah i mean i don't know you kind of hear like all this stuff about like, you know like red meat and uh, fat and uh, you know yeah but you kind of hear both I feel like there's kind of been this trend lately of like all these things we were spun as being super good for us and healthy are actually worse for us now. Like what? Like um, my mom and I were just talking about this. Like apparently she read something about how kale was spun as this like super healthy, you know, food for yeah. us. And now come to find out like Not it doesn't great. do shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Things like that, you know, or like non-dairy milk, like because, you know, yeah. for the longest time, milk is bad, like non-dairy is the way to go. Well, it turns out a lot of the non-dairy milks are actually shit. Yeah, like soy you. milk was terrible for you. and it Well, now they're saying oat milk is terrible. I'm sure. But I love it, so I'm going to drink it anyway, it. and I don't like milk, so I'm going to do me. But, you know, I'm just saying, like, totally. you, you, things come out, and they're like, oh, it's so good for you, and then, like, turns out 10 years later, they're like, mm, actually, not so much. Yeah. And I think veganism was like that. Like, it was so trendy for a minute, and they kind of spun it as it's better for you. But, like, I think at our core, like, we're meat eaters, and we're supposed to have meat. So there are some things that are very interesting. Like, so I think because our food is so, like, our meat is so filled with steroids. <laughs> Shit. Yeah. And um, growth hormone and stuff. So mm-hmm. it will, one thing that was interesting for the people that were, that were vegan – their blood flow in their genitalia for like sexual um, arousal was much higher than people who are eating mm-hmm. meat. So like whatever we are eating in the meat is not great for like, I think our estrogen, testosterone, like whatever that is. I think mm-hmm. so that was very interesting. I was like, oh, that's that's. And, and I was like, I was I said, I was like, why do you think that is? And Sarah was like, I think it's because they pump those chickens full of so much steroids. It's probably fucking terrible for you. I'm like, yeah, you're probably right. Um. But what's really sad about the show, like the the scientific experiment aside, they kind of just go through um, what as humans, like the problems with what we're eating and what it's doing to our environment. And they go on this whole thing of like, the reason why global warming is happening is really not because of fucking cars and, you know, uh, power plants and shit. It's because cows fart and burp so much methane into the atmosphere. Yep. And it is fucking doing terrible things to the atmosphere. And they're like, if you cut this in half, we would not have an issue in terms of like greenhouse effects and stuff. And I didn't know that. Mm. Now, see, if you had paid any attention to the Zac Efron documentary. I didn't watch it. There's a whole episode on that. So to that, I'm like, let's not do that. I don't need to eat. So I made this. Meanwhile, can I just get on my quick, just a quick get, soapbox? Get quick, Meanwhile, yeah. they are kicking the wild horses and burrows off of the Western land so they can fill it with more fucking cattle. I know. Like, we got to stop. Fuck. Okay, I'm, that's it. I'm done. We got to stop. It's also like the fucking, the, it's like these, they call them like lagoons or something, but they're just filled with like yeah. piss piss and shit and then they spray it all over the fucking fields to like oh god Mm -hmm. anyways i think that we should just maybe not eat as much meat you know no i just think that's the i would be curious to see them do a similar study where like somebody eats like farm raised oh yeah yeah yeah. uh they they, meat without all that shit there's a farmer who one is like uh 
who's a chicken farmer, and he's like, when, the second I saw how what was happening, these these chickens are like, wow, they, they pump them so, full of so much antibiotics. That they're all like just like walking like creatures that are fucked up and shit. And he was like, I would never eat chicken after owning the chicken farm. And yeah. same with the with the cows and stuff, and and also like farm raised fish is terrible for you. There's all this like living in their own shit. Anyways, if you want to be really depressed about your food, uh, yeah, you are what you eat. Go check it out. Yeah, uh, we'll say this though in terms of food. Uh, this isn't an ad. Should be uh, podcast nation. Let's go sell this one. Um, I got my lettuce grow going, which is a hydroponic uh-huh, yeah. system. You know, I showed it yeah. to you. I think. Yep. Very cute. Uh, dude, I'm fucking eating lettuce and chives and uh, I got everything good. Peppers and tomato. Dude, love the lettuce grow. The one problem is the dog's going out there and eating it. She's eating my salads. My dog doesn't eat, so that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, let's see. Do you want me to keep going or do you have anything else? All I have left, I think, is music. Okay, then I'll just keep going. There's not shit on television, although I will say... Uh, um, Drive to Survive is about to come out. The new season. Yeah. And so is the uh, new Full Swing. Oh, you know what? I Oh, that's not the one I wanted to watch. I wanted to watch Point Break. That I is one. I wanted to start that one. Um, got Drive to Survive coming up. We got um, on, on the near horizon, the new season of Bridgerton. Thank mm-hmm. God. It's been freaking forever. Uh, and I feel like there was one more I was really excited also, about. Also, I don't know what you're talking about. There's nothing on TV. I just named like seven things that are great and you won't watch them. So I don't love documentaries. It's a you thing. This isn't anything. Love documentary. Well, I watched a movie, but you should not watch it. Oh, no. I hope it's not the one I think you're going to say. ISS. Oh, no, that's not it. Okay. Uh, we rented it. It was like $18, $19. Oh, you would pay that to watch I a know. movie? I know. It's, well, it's in theaters right now. Shocked. Tensions flare in the near future aboard the International Space Station as a conflict breaks out on Earth. Reeling, the U.S. and Russian astronauts receive orders from the ground to take control of the International Space Station by any means necessary. ISS. Um, Sarah and I watched it. I was so excited. The cast is really good. Um, I mean, it sounds like something I would want to watch. I know. John Gallagher Jr.'s in it. Chris Messina. Uh, Ariana DeBose, like all like, I think they're all like stage actors, actually. At least that's what my wife said. So now I sound smart. Um, and I thought it was gonna be so cool. Like, so it like effectively like these two new Americans get on the ISS and there's, there's like, I think two Americans and then there's uh, like th- three Russians and they get there. And like on the first day they're having fun or whatever, and like they're doing their experiments. And all of a sudden they look out the window and you see like atomic bombs exploding and they're like, Oh shit. And then they get this, you know, they get this, prompt from their governments being like take over the ISS by any means necessary and you're like oh shit and then you know it becomes a survival thing anyways uh, don't waste your money mm. just a eh that's a tragedy it had such potential mm-hmm. you know yeah but um, there's know. a new movie on Hulu I want to watch oh yeah what's that called Sun Coast okay have you seen that? No, let me look it up. Uh, great cast. Laura Linney, Woody Harrelson, and the cute girl from The Last of Us. Who, by the way, did you know that she's um, the chick uh, the chick from Westworld? It's her daughter. I didn't know that. It totally looks like her. Yeah, I mean, now, that, now it makes sense, but I just didn't know. While caring for her brother, along with her audacious mother, a teenager strikes up a friendship with an eccentric activist who's protesting one of the most landmark medical cases of all time. Suncoast on Hulu. Uh, yeah, Laura Linney and um, Woody, Woody Harrelson. Harrelson. Phenom. I'm in. I'm in. I gotta watch that. You know what Sarah and I started watching? Which I don't know why I never did this. Maybe you watched it, but I, I never did. Uh, Wednesday. I never watched that either. And I'm an Adams. I should, I know. that should be like my jam. I'm shocked you guys never saw that. I know. And, um, I love it. Yeah. That, that makes sense. It's so different than what I thought it was. Oh, really? Yeah. Cause I, you know, I thought like, I thought it was gonna be like the original one, you know, uh, right. with 
That's Christina right. Ricci, who, by the way, is in this, which is great. Very great. Um, but no, it's so, so like Wednesday, like kind of gets in trouble. So she has to go to this, this like school for special kids, but effectively it's like school for like werewolves and vampires. And like, they're like, uh, they're all kind of supernatural and she's got a power, which is kind of, uh, which is kind of cool. She can kind of see in the future and shit. Um, I think I uh, figured out who the, like the main guy is immediately. Um, but, uh, I like it. It's, it's, it's quite fun. Okay. I, I, and I, this is stupid because it's the most popular Netflix show ever. I know. So me telling yeah. you this a year later is great job. Wells. pointless. you've been doing great work. Yeah. Um, Oh, and the last one, the best one. I absolutely loved this movie. Self-reliance. Have you seen this? No. Um, it's on Hulu right now. I think you have to rent it. Um, mm. You can rent stuff through Hulu? I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's free. So. I don't know. Given the opportunity to participate in a life or death reality game show, one man discovers there's a lot to live for. Self-reliance. Uh, the cast is so fun. Jake Johnson, main character from New Girl. Uh, Andy Samberg's in it, playing himself, actually, which is Love him. which is very funny. Um, Emily Hampshire, who was in Schitt's Creek, uh, she's in it. Um, and then uh, Bill Whiff, who's in, uh, I think that you should leave. He's in it, which is really funny. And then Anna Kendrick is the uh, love interest. And so the, the premise is he's, Jake Johnson's kind of like a lonely guy. And he gets approached by these two like German guys um, that represent the dark web. And there's a dark web reality TV show that follows you around and if you can stay alive for a month you get a million dollars um but there are people out there that are trying to kill you and that's being televised but you can never really see the per, the cameras the producers or whatever um and so when he's talking to the guys about like the rules of the game uh they go, there's one caveat that you can't be killed if you're with somebody. So like he, he's with his mom, like he can't be killed. And so he's like, okay, so I just need to have someone around me at all times. And so, yeah, easy. yeah so he's like, this is going to be easy. Um, but no one believes him that it's happening. Everyone thinks it's, it's fake. And um, uh, so like he gets his brother-in-law to like do it for the first night. And then he wakes up in the middle of the night and he like sees like this like murder out in the, uh, in the backyard and his, and his brother-in-law who he was sleeping next to is gone. So he runs into the bathroom and his brother-in-law is taking a shit. He's like, what are you doing? You got to shadow me. And he's like, I got to take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> so then he gets like a homeless man to like shadow him. He becomes like best friends with this homeless man. I'm telling you, one of the best comedies I've seen in a very, very long time. You know what it reminded me of? Um, mm. It reminded me a lot of Palm Springs, another movie that Andy oh, yeah. Samberg is in. It also reminded me of, I don't know if you ever saw the movie um, Safety Not Guaranteed. Um, mm -mm. Uh, anyways, run, don't walk to go see Self-Reliance. I absolutely loved it, and I think you will too. Okay. Yeah. Hulu? Hulu. So good. Love. Um, I was looking at some fuck you very much is and I, as okay. much as I love these that they're so they're so very nice. We're getting away from what fuck you very much is were originally, which is you guys giving us five so you, stars. You want people to talk more. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, we, we're getting away from what it was, was originally because originally it was we don't care what you say, mm -hmm. but give us five stars. But people were just being nice. Well, can we just read some nice ones? Maybe I, maybe we need confidence. Yeah, I know. Um, this one comes from Amy P in Arkansas. Five stars. Thanks for that. Subject line, y'all are my fave thing, bruh. I've been listening for years and I adore the both of you. Uh, I've never written a review and had to look up how to leave a review on Apple Pods. Uh, that's funny. Wells, I love your magical goofiness. 
And Brandy, huh. you are so talented and funny. I'm here for oh, it all. What a sweetie. Magical well, goofiness. I, I love that. Yeah. Uh, I could, Why wouldn't you want to read that? That's not done. Uh, I commute for work, and I actually enjoy it now because I look forward to you both. Great dynamic heart. Keep it up. Love, Amy in Arkansas. So sweet. Well, I love that. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. And then um, this one comes from Molly from the Animal Clinic. Five stars. Thanks for that. Um, subject line, books and horses. Could literally listen Ooh. to this pod three days a week. You should consider doing more episodes. You've recommended some no. amazing books. But F you very much for not recommending the book. But... But F you very much for recommending the book Fourth Ring, Wing. It has turned into one of my favorites, and I can't stop thinking about its sequel, Iron Flame. I need you to talk about both books more because I need your opinion on the way Iron Flame left on a massive cliffhanger. Also, it's supposed to be a TV series at some point, and Sarah Ooh. should definitely be on it. Brandy, mm. as a horse girl myself, I love it when you talk about your horses and country life, and I totally understand what you went through with weather this year. We just had it bad in Nebraska. Love you guys. Oof, yeah, Nebraska sounds rough. Molly from the Animal Clinic, you're the best. I love her. Um, I hated that it fourth oh. wing ended on a cliffhanger mm. like it did. But Molly, you got to get in to the next book, which is called, is it Iron Flame? Yeah, Iron Flame. Uh, Iron Flame's awesome by the way. So great. Okay. And I don't know what else to say. It's, uh, I've talked about it before. It's like Harry Potter meets Game of Thrones. And I know I need to read them. I think I would like, you're going to do, I've got Sarah listening to it and she's like, fuck, this is good. And, and it's like yeah. Harry Potter meets Game of Thrones, but like super sexual. Uh, oh yeah. I forgot about that. Part. Like straight up. I, and I, and I, even, I was, I was blown away when I was reading a thing. I was reading a YA novel and all of a sudden the words, and he thrust his cock inside of me. And I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I thought I was reading a YA novel. This is not that. <laughs> but anyways, the second um, one's awesome. And I'm I'm like halfway through it. So I haven't finished it yet, but uh, uh, very great. And um, I would love Sarah to be on it. I wonder if she's a little too old to be uh, on the show. But I know that. Uh, she looks so young, totally. though. Totally. But like they don't cast that you know? way anymore. They used to like. I know. Like, you remember Grease? They had 40-year-old kids, 40-year-old people playing high schoolers. Now you yeah. can't. Well, Miley's brother on Hannah Montana was playing like a 15, 16-year-old, and he was like in his 30s. Yeah. Um, I do know uh, yeah. Kaylin uh, Bell, Dean's mm -hmm. wife. Uh, she's so obsessed with it that she is like petitioning to be on the show. And she's like, I just want to be a background actor. I don't really give a shit. So Love that. Go. Well, speaking of books, uh, one of my friends gave me a book that they just finished that they were like in tears over how good it what was. What is it? Called Tomorrow, Tomorrow, Tomorrow. Okay. Apparently it's amazing. So I just got it. Haven't started it yet. Um, but she loved it. Oh, um, I've seen this. Have you? Yeah. The novel, the novel follows the relationship between three friends who begin a successful video game company together. Um, maybe I've read it. Shit, I don't even know. Mm. All right, I'm into it. Um, I do think there was one more fuck you very much. Uh, this one comes from Callalily13. Five stars, thanks for that subject line, period. Um, just like the punctuation. Love this episode. So happy for Miley. Like the background info and T. So there you go. Cute. Yeah, cute. You say cute a lot. Cute. What does that mean to you? I know. It's just cute. You know, it's cute. Is it like you're like, cool? Cute. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. It's so cute. It's cute. Um, I think that's all I've got. We do have some calls, but I think we should save it for the next episode. Let's save it. Let's save yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, but by the mm -hmm. way, if you want to leave some, uh, some fuck you very much, please do. Um, say some shit. Say, yeah. I guess. To Wells, because he's the one that wants that. I mean. Well, I always think it's funny when people are like. <laughs> like what? <laughs> like y'all suck? No, and they're like, <laughs> stop telling the, the, like the plot, the entire thing that I don't uh, want to watch it. You're like, oh, sorry about that. Yeah. I don't know. Um, what'd you think about uh, Beyonce's country song she dropped? Didn't listen to it. Oh, come on. What am I? What am I over here? A guy who listens to Beyonce country? Maybe. 
it's like, you remember when Garth Brooks did Chris Gaines and you're like, what are you doing, dude? No. What? I will say. Is it good? Everyone's going country. Everyone. Yeah. It is the new fucking thing. Well, I liked it long Ev- ago. Everybody's jumping on the bandwagon. Yeah. Lana, Beyonce, Post Malone. I can't say, I can't, I, have a, I know another one that I can't say, but because I got the inside scoop and they can't say, but like everyone's doing Miley. it. Miley. She's already done well, it. yeah. Sort of, not really, but she's not, but I just, you yeah. know. Pray, cray. I, I mean, yeah. So Beyonce. But um, wait, I did have, <clears throat> yeah, you, I have some Yeah, give us, give us some uh, going out Muzaks. Um, we don't have to play anything of his because we always do, but you know, no comp put out the deluxe album yeah. and he put out the song forever and it is so okay. good. Um, also though, I think you like this band. Uh come on. Do you like the band Wild Rivers? Yes, I do. They put out a song called Everywhere I Go, and I'm obsessed with it. Uh what do you got coming up? You know, not a lot. I'm I'm in a weird lull. Yeah. I hate February. February is always a lull. Yeah, same. Uh I'm chilling for a minute. And then uh really I'm chilling until like March and then gotta show my first show of the year in Vegas is March eighteenth. Cool. I'm headlining XS nightclub. Please come Please see me. Do. I think it's spring break, so you know, let's kick off your spring break right. Um I'll be out in LA again, you know? So I might see ya then. Nice. Um also randomly booked a show in Biloxi, Mississippi. Oh, nice. Yeah. So if you happen to be in Biloxi, also, I think it's spring break era, yeah. um, March 24th, I think. They got some good I food down there. This. Do yeah, they? Yeah, because it's like. Besides the, the crawfish Yeah, shit? I mean, that's what it is. It's, it's, it's like, you know, Mississippi Gulf Coast food. I don't want that. March 23rd, I will be in Biloxi, Mississippi, if you find yourself on the, uh, what is that coast called there? The Mississippi Gulf Coast. That. Yeah. If you're down there, come see me. Okay. Come party with me in Biloxi. Next thing I'm going to be going to is uh, I'm going to be in Dallas in April playing in a golf tournament with Ben Higgins. Uh, so, yeah, information about that over on my Instagram badge. Um, cool. If you want to call and leave us a voicemail, please do. 858-630-1856 is the number. Um, also, like, we should probably delve into this in the, the DMs that we get on the YFT page. Oh, you know, yeah. we've done that for a for while. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Is that it? It's all did folks. We, do it? we did it. All right. Well, see you later. See you next time. This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation.